Hello, and welcome to How I Did It, where I sit down from a microphone and I just tell you how I did it. Uh, today is a background from the DC Dance for Demon. It is the office building where our main character works, the back kind of lot of it. Um, it is based off of a real life place in my city. It's where my husband used to work. Um, this bridge is called the Pennybacker Bridge or the 360 Bridge. And there's like this off, there's a bunch of office complexes like underneath it and on the water. There's a golf course on the other side. And um, I just, it's a good, it's a good view. And so I was like, oh, I think it's a really nice place for her office building. And so that's what I did. Uh, the line work on the bridge uh, was done in Illustrator. Uh, and then I brought it into Photoshop for line editing and coloring and stuff. Uh, I just, I prefer to do it. Uh, I did do the other line work in Photoshop because it's a little more organic. Um, so that's kind of the difference that I, the difference in like, whether I use Photoshop for line work or Illustrator for line work, if it's a very, very mechanical thing, I prefer Illustrator because I like the vector aspect of the lines and the Boolean um, curves, you know, tools and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but if it's something a little more organic, I prefer to use Photoshop. Like the grass you see in the background there, that was a Photoshop brush um, that I made where it's a grass outline brush as opposed to just a grass brush. And I've used it four or five times for this project because uh, it's, it's good. I like it. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, you'll see I also do a little bit of line cleanup in Photoshop. That's because as much as I like doing line work in Illustrator, it's... It's not as effective as it could be for line art specifically. Like, it's really great for, like, I did, I did all the UI in Illustrator. Um, and it's really great for that kind of stuff. It's really great for very, like, graphic design kind of things. But I just, I, I know people that use it, like, super effectively for things like line art. And I just, I don't, like, unless it's for something very, very, like, straight like it was really great for the bridge it worked really really well for the bridge but I would not have used it for anything else uh, okay so I'm coloring the bridge um, the colors especially for backgrounds I typically am not actually painting with a color I'm intending to keep lots of times like that grass does not stay that color um, I, I just I like really high contrast colors to get my overall feel in first but those high contrast colors typically are not what I'm gonna want to use I don't think I change them too much on the bridge I know I do on the grass and the trees and stuff and that's just uh, that's just a thing that's just a methodology I use for coloring I don't know I, I don't um, it's with Photoshop it's so easy to change colors afterward that I don't really stress it too much I guess you know, I'd rather um, get the colors nice and filled in and get a general idea of what I want than getting the color like pixel perfect right the first time. Because once I get, all, I won't really know for sure why I like to click all the colors in anyway. Oh, and this, <laughs> my very first game, Amaranth. My backgrounds are technically sound, but they look really, really not great with the characters on top of them. And I've, so I've learned since then, like I'm always like super afraid of that now. And I've learned since then, you know, with other games, with, with Heart Connection, with Naxxus, um, to make sure at every step of the way I'm sort of testing the sprites against the background to make sure that the sprites look okay. Uh, or, you know, it, it's going to be totally thrown off and I'm going to feel stupid again. Because I like the sprites to look like they're living in the environment that I'm making for them. Oh, and then the shading on the bridge is something I don't normally do. I typically only do like one color shading. I, I'm just lazy is what it comes down to. I'm super lazy when it comes to shading. I know how to do it and I just don't want to. So what I ended up doing for the bridge for shading is I picked uh, two, two, they're, they're not blacks, they're grays. So they're very, very deep grays. I picked two shades of gray, um, which is probably how I'm going to go ahead and handle um, all the outdoor scenes and I ended up handling all the outdoor scenes the same way 
uh, same shades of gray and everything. But using two shades, I have the side light hitting shade, which is like on the sides of the bridge and stuff. And then the no light hitting shade, which is on the undersides of the bridge. And the supports and the uprights and stuff. And then I also took a blue, a blue shade that was kind of in between the two to do the reflection off the water. Uh, to try to get a kind of semblance of like depth and like it is an actual place just cartoonified. Um, there's a lot of like little things I'm gonna need to go back and change and kind of make it work. Uh, but I'm so, I'm mostly happy with it. Like I'm definitely gonna have to go back and tweak some stuff because um, it's not perfect and it could be better. But that's just how it always is. It can always be perfect, or rather, it's never gonna be perfect. So you gotta just take it one step at a time. Oh, and of course I go back in and I soft, uh, soften the edge of the shade on the uh, cylindrical uh, bars of the bridge itself. And this is using the pen tool in Photoshop, because even though I don't like Illustrator's vector sometimes, I still do like me some vector. And then of course you got old school perspective um, techniques. It ended up not coming out quite the way I wanted it to. I had to kind of um, half fake it a little bit. But it was kind of a combination of eyeballing it and uh, actually using the perspective techniques you're supposed to. And that's just to add in the bars on the edge of the bridge. Uh, again, this is all pulling from reference. This is an actual picture of a bridge I'm pulling from, trying to get it to look as reasonably like the bridge in real life as possible. You know, you, references are your friends, you know, references are your friends. This is not how the water will be. Those water stand in to see how it would look. The sky would end up changing colors. There's a little bit of cut there. Uh, I ended up not liking the sort of solid color on the green when I actually got it all in. So I'm using the Photoshop tree render. And I just took a tree and I kind of like multiplied it, multiplied it, multiplied it to create a more variegated texture. I think I used a little bit of uh, um, uh, poster edging or a little bit of um, cutout ink. And it's not quite perfect. You can see that there's a little bit of patterning. I'm gonna need to go back and maybe change some colors on there. But I like the overall texture a lot more. And you can see here how I went ahead and changed the grass green to a more of an olive green to go with the overall tone of the game itself. This is not how I just sort of leave the background though. So I have the background part and you'll notice that it's transparent where the water is. That's because underneath this background, I'm gonna layer this like five times longer strip of water blue. It's a little bit textured like waves. And then in engine, I will layer them and I'm actually gonna end up animating the blue to give myself a animated background. And this is the snippet of code where I'm gonna make that animation happen. This is just Rempy's uh, uh, ATL, which is uh, animation transformation language. And all I'm doing is defining image Riverside and I'm defining this image as containing two separate images. The one underneath, which is the first one listed, is the, you know, bg slash river.png. And what I'm telling it to do is take that big strip of blue and it's gonna be starting X aligned on the left. So like it's at zero, zero. So it's like left justification. And then the next line's telling it that over the span of 60 seconds, I'm gonna make it right justified basically. I'm aligning it on the right side of the image and then it's just gonna repeat that. And that creates this image that moves right to left. And when I kind of adjust the art, it'll look like a flowing river. And then on top of that is gonna be the riverside landscape with that little bit of transparency peeking through to show the river underneath it. So when I call it in my game narratively, I'm just using scene riverside and it calls riverside, which is the whole image. It calls it with a dissolve and brings it all into my scene. And this is what it ends up looking like. And there are a lot of little tweaks I still want to make. It's not quite where I want it. Uh, but this is basically how I'm making all the backgrounds that are animated in the D. Very simple ETL language. If I do anything more complex, which I might, I'll definitely show how I did that. Uh, but until next time, I hope you enjoyed and I can't wait to see you around again.